live over both YouTube and Facebook. Getting a good signal. Let me just wait for confirmation from the services. All right, live on Facebook. Let me just wait for YouTube. Very difficult though. So it's uh, another episode of Crypto Watch, episode nine. Let me just try to get the different services up. All right, so there, the numbers are going up. Let me just... Access via YouTube so I can see the chat natively, but I can chat here also. Okay, so let's play the ad first before I forget. See you after the break. <laughs> Pero saan ka kukuha ng legit windows? Daming options, daming prices. Ah, kalito. Buti na lang, may cdkeyoffers.com. Madali lang ang order. Search for the software you need. Add to cart. Daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang 5 minutes. Finished. May legit working CDK ka na para sa windows mo. Gamitin lang aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com I swear talaga, parang ne palagi napuputol yung ad na yan right at that point. It never lets it finish for some reason. Anyway, yun. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Crypto Watch, episode 9. Uh, gonna be talking about today China's digital yuan, which actually started. Parang they started talking about it 2014 palang, and then they, I think the technical aspect they started really coding it and figuring it out. Paano natin is a scale to in 2019. So yung unang uh, discussions 2014, and then 2019 is when they really started to get the ball rolling. So it has been in the works for a long time. Pero if you remember from our previous episode or a couple of episodes we talked about before na China has banned all crypto and all mining. So bakit sila may digital yuan ngayon? So we'll talk about that uh, in a bit, the connection between those things. We'll talk about na Bitcoin difficulty has reached an all-time high in terms of mining. We'll explain a little bit about that if you're not familiar. Uh, ano ba yung sabi ng difficulty? Anong connection on to Bitcoin. Uh, number three, also actually com related to mining and uh, a tip given by one of our frequent viewers and a frequent customer of the shop is uh, apparently may mga scam na umikot ngayon promising install mo tong software na to tapos yung hash rate mo on an LHR card or low hash rate card. What is a low hash rate card? We'll talk about it also. Uh, bas basically, it's a nerfed card. But there are programs going around promising that if you install this program, you'll get 100% hash rate on an LHR card. Are those a scam? We'll talk about it. Although, spoiler alert, yes, they are, and you probably shouldn't download them if you're a miner. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about Russia, Ukraine, and oil, which has had a bad effect on the markets, including, I guess, crypto. So the the last bit of news close into our market analysis segment. Although, if you take a look at the text description below, you'll notice cada episode, we do one episode a month. I put there the price of Bitcoin at the time of the episode. And bumagsak siya nung... Okay, let's check the data. So its highest was around October. It was around 62.2K. Episode 5 in terms of Crypto Watch. Actually, I think... It went slightly higher pa than this. That was the all-time high of Bitcoin. Then slowly, pababa siya ng pabag, pababa. And then, bagsak siya. Although, the lowest it hit is around 30, 32. But, it's been recovering nicely. Pero ngayon, now we're at around 37.6. Uh, John from YouTube is asking, unrelated, but will you have stock of the Fractal Torrent Nano? 
we will once our supplier has stock. Um, wala pa siyang stock ngayon. The case John is talking about is the ITX version of the very popular fractal design torrent, which is a massive case. <laughs> Sobrang laki ng torrent. Pero uh, bago bago lang siya na case yung FD torrent, pero sikat na sikat siya kasi ang ganda talaga ng airflow niya. We've done a couple of builds in it. We have it available at the shop. Sobrang ganda talaga nung <laughs> nung airflow ng torrent, pero sobrang laki niya. Anyway, the company who makes it, Fractal Design, has recently come out with an ITX version kasi sikat na sikat yung mga ITX builds ngayon. So, they they recognize that, oh, we have a good thing. Parang maganda naman yung response sa torrent natin. Let's make it smaller para makakash in tayo sa ITX market. Um, so, the Nano is the ITX version. Uh, I don't know, John, kailan namin makakuha yan. Yun, it really depends on our supplier. But if you know us, naman, um, if you look at the builds that we've done, uh, we're fans of ITX builds. We do a lot of them. So definitely, pag, ano, pag available na sa atin, uh, we will have also. Yun nga, di ko lang masabi kailan. What's up, Revin Jan? Thanks for joining us. Revin Jan from YouTube, who is in the market for a component also. And uh, we also ordered it already. Uh, but we'll let you know. <laughs> Uh, not today, Revin Jan, but uh, it's on the way. Actually, I expect it to come in tomorrow. Um, pretty sure tomorrow, but we'll message you when it comes in. Sup, JR Retes from Facebook. So we'll start with the first bit of news, China's digital yuan. Yung nga, first proposed or first pinag nila in 2014. The actual hard work began in 2019. And actually, it has really good numbers. Hindi lang natin napapansin kasi China and... Um, you know, it's always hard to get news out of China. But hindi lang natin napansin, but yung digital yuan actually already has 261 million unique uh, wallet accounts. Are, are they the news article that I read claims as individual people. So it's not just like ako, pwede ako gumawa ng lima pang account kasi nakatay in yun sa identity mo. So I'm not sure if as a person you can have more than one wallet account. And that's the whole thing with the digital yuan is that it is China's cryptocurrency. So it follows China's very minimal or lack or or zero respect for privacy. And that, that's one of the main benefits of crypto is that if done right, transactions are mostly anonymous. Not anymore. I, I've seen workarounds, even Bitcoin. Um there, there are ways to track. Uh, the flow of Bitcoin and then eventually so that you can finger it or kumbaga pwede mo ituro na yung, yung nagpadala ng Bitcoin transaction na to itong si Mr. X or si Mr. Y. Um, there are other currencies like Monero which are even more privacy-centered but I haven't I haven't seen like a crypto na 100% anonymous na talaga. There, there's always some way that you can kind of backtrack it based on the available information on the blockchain. But any crypto is basically a lot more private, a lot more anonymous than di China's digital yuan. Because yeah, let's get into it. The, one of the reasons which we talked about before on the show is na why would China ban crypto and mining? She number one miner dati for Bitcoin, the number one country in the world. Tapos at the time, takot yung mga tao na sa dami nung uh, miners sa China, there's a kind of exploit kasi in the Bitcoin network that if you get if you're able to control a certain percentage of the miners above 50 percent i think but the way it's very technically you know it's sobrang technical sa math i'm not a math major i won't pretend na i understand the math but the way i understand it is na if you control a certain threshold of miners you're able to manipulate the authentication of the blockchain the whole point of the blockchain is that it can't be fake Masahan mo na if Anton sends to Revenjan 0.1 Bitcoin, totoong Bitcoin yun. It can't be fake. The transaction can't be altered or spoofed or uh, forged or something like that. But uh, smart people looked at the Bitcoin blockchain and realized that yun nga, if you control a certain percentage of miners, you are able to manipulate the chain in certain ways. Uh, and there was fears that China being the number one country at the time na nagmamine would be able to do that um 
but it just goes to show that you know people get upset about a lot of things. Na hindi naman like walang pakis si China. <laughs> like it doesn't it didn't give a damn didn't give a tooting damn if you know it was number one in the world in terms of uh, Bitcoin mining hash rate. So it got rid of crypto because it was a means. Put ginagamit mga citizens niya, or it was a possible means for its citizens na makalipat ng pera abroad. Ayo yun ng central government that wants to keep a con- tight control on its citizens. So get rid of all the other crypto, ban na yan lahat, illegal na yan lahat. Oh, and by the way, gumagawa tayo ng sarili nating crypto, which is the digital yuan. And now, at the end of 2021, 261 million people in China have an account, have a wallet account. Uh, and 1.5 billion na daw, as of the end, at end of 2021, yung transactions, uh, tally transactions using digital yuan. So I mean those are those are staggering numbers. Um and it's something na bago palang purely China domestic market palang di pa ganun kasikat. Like uh, Alipay and WeChat have like 90-95% market penetration. Yung digital yuan parang 20% or 15% lang ata. So you can imagine the potential for for this thing. And so they they rolled it out to foreigners. They let foreigners have a kumbaga, a test. Yung mga athletes who went to the Winter Olympics uh, in Beijing were in inside the Olympic Village kasi yung COVID quarantines for the Winter Olympics. Bawal lumabas, bawal pumasok. So it was like a mini bubble, yung Winter Olympics. But inside the bubble, foreigners could buy hard wallets nung digital yuan and use that. Uh, so it was the first public public in the sense nakita ng mga non-Chinese kung paano ba tong digital yuan na to. Uh, let me just go through the chat briefly. Uh, and this is why I like using Restream Studio. Revin uh, yeah, um, if it comes in tomorrow, you can pay tomorrow. But no worries. We'll, we got your back. We'll let you know naman. Uh, we'll reserve it for you. Don't tell anybody. Because <laughs> we don't usually reserve. But uh, Revin Jan is a good customer. Uh, he's bought a lot of stuff from us before. So, you know. We always under the personal touch. From Facebook, Ed Darwin. Haven't bought anything from the shop, but I enjoy the contents on YouTube. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Ed. Um, and yun, even if you haven't bought anything from the shop yet, I hope you consider us in the future. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching us on YouTube. Sobra naking tulong din nun sa for for our marketing and getting the word out and things like that. Actually, I like talking to people if I'm at the shop and customers come in. I like asking them how they learned about us because um, we're a small shop, you know, obviously hindi kami easy PC, DynaQuest, wala kami sa Gilmore, hindi kami PC options, PCX. Um, so I always ask customers how they found out about us. A lot of the time it's through YouTube, but more and more now also it's word of mouth na parang, ah, you know, may dalawa akong kakilala sa work na nag-recommend sa'yo, or I heard from a friend na hardware sugar is good, maasahan. So it's good na medyo parang snowball lang yan na maliit siya at the start, and as it keeps rolling, it gathers up more and more speed. Uh, we're not a new shop. We're three years in the business, but we are still very much a small shop. So it's nice na para may word of mouth. And of course, malaking tulong din yung social media. That's why we're so kulit. <laughs> we're so kulit on social media. Um, from YouTube, let me just go through some of the chat. Ryan, may idea ba kayo sa rates sa mga PC services like Reformat, etc.? I'm doing commission PC bills po kasi, but di ko pa sure kung tama po yung rate ko. Um, to be honest, I don't really keep up with the rates of other shops. Yung sa amin, uh, if you buy the majority of parts from us, it's free. I, I'm not advertising to Ryan because he obviously is a builder so he knows um, uh, he knows how to build. Uh, kwento ko lang yung rates ng Hardware Sugar, baka makatulong in the context na you're trying to compare. Um, sa amin, if you buy the majority of parts from us, it is free. Uh, assembly is free. If not, I think the we charge an assembly fee of 2000 we have a bunch of other services also like 1750 for cleaning and cable management. But if you're a former customer or you know, nakabili ka na sa amin, it's uh, 50% off. So 850 na lang siya. 875? 1750 divided by 2. <laughs> um, you reformat actually we don't really do except for customers. Yun libre yun for customers. May diagnostics din kami um, and it depends kung mahirap or madali. Um, we might do a reformat in the context of a diagnostic service. Our rates are on our Facebook. It's the pinned post. Um, to be honest, I can't really remember right now. I think it's 2000 for hard or 25 for hard and 1250 for easy. 
we don't do it as a standalone service um yung uh reformat from unel unel g sorry i watch most of your videos learned a lot pc build salamat i enjoy it at the same time thanks so much um uh, not gonna lie, I really like getting these comments because the whole point then of the channel, syempre parang free marketing for the site for 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 hardware sugar. But at the same time, uh, yung goal talaga namin makakuha pa ng ibang more people into the hobby. Because kami personally we really enjoy it. Uh, we think it's very rewarding also to 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 actually like ginagamit mo computer mo araw-araw and then paglingon mo sa ilalim ng desk parang Ang saya, ang saya ng feeling na ako gumawa niyan, di ba? Parang ako pumili ng part, ako gumawa niyan. Hindi siya nag-boot noong una. Nag-panic ako, pero inayos ko naman. Uh, I, I, I reset the CPU, I reset the GPU. Nakalimutan ko pala lagyan ng RAM. No joke, that's happened to me. Um, so, ang saya lang ng feeling. It's very rewarding. And that's also why we gear the YouTube channel towards a little bit more towards beginners to try to entice more people into the hobby. So, I really like getting uh, comments like this. No joke. Um, uh, it it is also very rewarding for us to see comments like that. Uh, just a little bit more about the digital U1. Sorry, it's like it's hard to juggle between like the the mga notes ko for this episode and then, but I also want to react to chat. Uh, but to go back to the digital U1, actually I was interested. Bir ako athlete sa Winter Olympics, but I was interested. Kamusa ba tong hard wallet? Pero the reality was a bit of a letdown. Basically, how it how you would get digital yuan if you were a foreign athlete. May parang kiosk, may parang ATM machine, may dala kang foreign currency, let's say may dala kang dollars. Uh, you would feed the dollars into the ATM machine, tapos lalabas lang siya nung parang ATM, parang debit card. So that's your hard wallet. Um, your digital yuan is stored there, and you're running around the Olympic Village, and they say, oh, gusto, gusto ko ng Coke. Although if you're an athlete, probably wouldn't drink Coke. Gusto ko ng bottled water. <laughs> uh, so, dala dala mo yung parang ATM card mo, yung hard wallet na where the digital yuan is stored, and they just swipe it or whatever, and that's how you pay for it. Uh, for me, that's kind of corny. I was envisioning more like yung naka integrate na to sa, talaga sa mobile or some other more. Uh, yung talagang ginagamit yung potential of crypto as a digital currency rather than something that's fixed. I mean, essentially, parang debit card lang yun, eh, di ba? Hindi naman required uh, for the foreign athletes to use digital yuan. They, they, um, you had the option to pay in Rimbini, I think, or Visa card. I uh, just want to say a quick shout out to SAP, ITX Addict, uh, keeping company while driving. I hope it's not, uh, I hope you're close by to your house instead of like uh, you're coming back, you're coming from Manila and then going back to your place. Medyo malayo pa yun. But uh, thanks for tuning in. And I did put in your tip uh, into this, our third bullet point uh don't get too distracted <laughs> keep your eyes on the road so yeah digital yuan is a reality uh china is the world leader there is no other there is no other country na even close to having a digital currency with that kind of market penetration with that kind of technical expertise already deployed and studied and executed on Wala, um, talagang world leader in China. And there are things not very admirable about current Chinese society. Um, you know, personally, I'm a more freedom kind of guy over uh, censored your internet. Uh, kung mali yung sinabi mo, pupunta ka sa re-education camp. I mean, no joke, man. That is some serious stuff. And I, I am glad I don't live in that kind of society. But at the same time, um, yun, when they when they do do things that I think are praiseworthy, um, props, diba? credit where credit is due. And the digital yuan really is something like that, na talagang inasikaso nila. Pero ang galing kasi ng Communist Party, eh. mo, especially si Xi Jinping, talaga it's all about control. Eh. Um, crypto started out, cryptocurrency started out as a potential avenue na ano, anonymity. Governments can't track you. It's not fiat. There are no serial numbers on these darn things when you send when you send a transaction. So it, it's it's not controlled by any government. 
So China was like, you know, I like that ease of use, but I want control. So I'm going to get rid of everybody. Bawa na Ethereum, bawa na Bitcoin, bawa na Ripple, bawa na Monero, bawa na Dogecoin, bawa na si Shiba Inu. Lahat ng mga kalakohan na yan, bawa na yan lahat. Instead, here, have the shiny new Communist Party approved digital yuan. So uh, it's really, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Like El Salvador, who made Bitcoin part of uh, an official currency and, you know, uh, merchants there have to take it. They didn't have the resources to make their own crypto. Um, they used, uh, they, they relied on Bitcoin. They're using Bitcoin now. I, I, I don't even know if you would consider it a cryptocurrency, the digital yuan as a cryptocurrency. It's, it's a currency that uses blockchain for sure, the underlying technology. But uh, in the sense that, uh, to be honest, I don't even know how, how it works. I don't think there are any miners. So it's it's really more like a Gcash kind of equivalent with the government in control. So the Communist Party took everything that it liked about the certain aspects of crypto, ease of use, digital first, portability, and got rid of all the things it didn't like, like, like privacy, anonymity. I'm sure when you get a wallet, if you're a Chinese citizen, they tie in yan sa ano mo. I bet they tie it into their social point system. In China, there's a social point system. Um, and if you don't, to, to buy train tickets, to buy airplane tickets, to get certain services from the government, you need to have a certain score. Um, so if you're a dissident, you said some shit about Xi Jinping, you know, if... Um, uh, they caught you trying to research uh, Tiananmen Square, something, right? Your score is going to go down. Um, and I, I, I bet if not now in the future, Digital Yuan will be tied to your social score. Um, another means of control by the state, another means by which they can get you to toe the line. Um, so it's amazingly, I mean, it's amazing. It's 261 million people have used it. What, uh, sorry, they moved 1.5 billion worth of transactions by end of 2021. But it is rather scary that a uh, totalitarian state uh, has deployed such a technology. Um, okay, let me just go through the chat a little bit. Pinoy Tech, get into crypto if you can. Um, I would. Uh, yes, that's my general advice actually to a lot of people. But my, my general advice also is na, take it very slow. There's, there's no rush. Your things a crypto, and I see this especially yon sa NFTs. Yung things sa NFT parang may FOMO. Eh. It's like shit. Uh, everybody is talking about NFTs. I want to make money. I don't want to miss out. Na na I missed the boat on cryptocurrency. I don't want to miss the boat on NFT. So gagawa ng account sa OpenSea and then kahit anong unang NFT na makita ko bibilin ko. I mean, there's no there's no need to rush, guys. Take it slow. Just look at the prices of Bitcoin. Dun sa text description natin sa baba. Uh, hit 62, now it's at 37. Yan yung maganda sa crypto. Palaging, parang roller coaster yan. Every episode, I say the same, same thing. Akit bagsak yan. So if you buy it too high, uh, and it goes down, don't panic. It will always go up. If you buy it high and you're worried that it'll never go up, it will always go up. It's just really a matter of time. Don't panic. Take your time. Anti monitor from YouTube. May 30, 50 na po ba kayo at magkano? Actually, we did. We had two. Um, but they're reserved now because uh, somebody is going to buy them. <laughs> like, uh, nag nag magdi DP na siya. Uh, they were, we had pallet 3050s. They were around 23,000. I did see somebody in another tech for Facebook. I don't problema sa. <laughs> Speaking of like, I like freedom and I like freedom of speech, but. Sometimes talaga yung mga tao din na nag-comment sa internet, talaga wala talagang alam eh. Um, um, I, saw, I saw a post, or I forget which which Facebook, local Facebook PC group, may nagsabi na, kung may makita kang 3050 na over 19K, overpriced na yon Or over 19 or 20K. I'm gonna tell you guys, yung sa supplier pa lang, lampas na sa 20K, yung iba. Yung iba 20K. Obviously, if you buy it from your supplier, ipap magka ipapatong mo pa yon, de ba? Kasi kailangan mo rin mag ano kumita. So that, that guy who said na anything above twenty k is overpriced was just literally talking out of his ass. He didn't know anything. Uh, as again, you know, we're a PC shop, so I, I see the prices every day. Um, and 
there's really a disconnect between people like claiming na oh overpriced oh ganito oh ganyan eh yun nga as um I, I we did a video this month na um explaining like how how do you set up a PC shop so eh, there dami kasi misinformation eh madali lang magpost um kahit wala kang alam tapos sasabihin mo oh to overpriced kasi SRP Okay, I won't get into my rant about SRP because I'm going to get derailed off um, of the topic of cryptocurrency. Pero, uh, yeah, a lot of people, kokonti lang naman yung shop, mas, so, mas kokonti pa yung actually people who talk about prices like Hardware Sugar. I think, to be honest, we're the only shop I know who even remotely talks about like, ano ba yung, magkano ba yung nabibili namin from the actual suppliers? How much is it on the supplier side? And then, you know, when it reaches us. So there is really a mismatch, a, a, a unbalanced yung information scale. A lot of people claim they know something but don't really know. Sila yung maingay. The people who really know something are very small minority and they don't really post. Um, but I am telling you right now, as a owner of a PC shop, uh, hindi overpriced yung 3050 na over 20k. <laughs> uh, whoever that guy was, again. <laughs> uh, as, as I mentioned in that video about owning a PC shop, kung kaya mo pa mag SRP after na bili mo sa supplier, either galik ka sa pera, gusto mo lang magsunog ng pera, or you don't want to be in business for very long, because it's really unrealistic. Uh, <laughs> Revin Jan, uh, <laughs> this is a running gag I, we have with Revin Jan. Na marami, marami siyang binibili pero never, never ko siya. Uh, I'm usually the one who special delivers, meaning I personally deliver the items to the shop. But I, as I always tell Revin Jan, it's really not like I don't pick the customers. It just so happens na um, either libre ako or like you, the, the, the one I like the best is paying parang circuit. Let's say I have a customer in Magallanes and then Alabang and then Cavite and then uwi na ako. So isang iko talang yun, Makati, papuntang south and then back up, back, back up to Makati. Um, so we really try to make it more efficient, like a chain like that. It just so happened that when Revin Jan orders, <laughs> uh, we like, you know, uh, either like I'm not free or there's no chain or something like that. Uh, but but it's not intentional. Promise. Although, you know, um, <laughs> um, I do like to tweet him. <laughs> like every time I post, I've, I've done a custom order on Facebook. Like I, like, I put like PS Revin Jan. <laughs> um, number two, Bitcoin difficulty is at an all time high. So the. Just to explain, uh, if there are people in the audience na hindi familiar, difficulty rate is, um, so Bitcoin is the OG cryptocurrency and or original or like you know the, the first one that really gained any prominence. Um, it's one feature which has been basically copied by all other cryptocurrencies is that the more, well actually the the, the entire uh, the way Bitcoin works. Uh, served as a template for basically everybody else. The basics are are usually the same. People do work for the network that's called mining. The work basically consists of uh, authenticating transactions. Yun nga, if Anton sends 0.1 Bitcoin to Revinjan, the work of the miners is to solve complicated math problems using their computer hardware to authenticate that my transaction, that that is not a fraudulent transaction. Indeed, that a certain individual, and again, because it's Bitcoin, it's not tied to any name, it's not tied to any Facebook profile or anything. It's completely anonymous in that sense. Um, one individual sent another individual this amount. That amount is legit. That that was actually that account actually had that amount, and that tama naman yung pinadala, hindi yun like forged. The transfer wasn't forged, and there you know there is a wallet. ID to receive it. Um, so that's the work. Another aspect of Bitcoin is that the more people who are working, the harder and harder it is to earn Bitcoin. Because the, the network rewards you by for doing work by giving you Bitcoin. It's a bit more complicated than that because actually, isang bagsak yan. Only one person gets the reward. And then, pababa ng pababa yung reward na yan. That day, when I was still mining, it's at 50 Bitcoin. For reward, but it's I think I don't know if it's gone down already to 25 or something. To be honest, I don't keep up anymore because I, I don't mind BTC anymore. Um but uh sup, David Go, Facebook. Um so the one who created Bitcoin, Satoshi, 
people have claimed that they are Satoshi, but nobody has really definitively proven who Satoshi is. The one who created Bitcoin was like, yeah, I want people to work. But the more people who work, the more quickly the rewards will be generated. Ayoko rin yun. Uh, because it will lead to inflation. Te, ang gagaling ng Bitcoin eh. I mean, you know, to be honest, man, uh, props to Satoshi. I mean, the, the, he was able to work out the basics of economics. Bitcoin, like any commodity, is valuable because it is scarce. It is not something that just flops out from the tree every three seconds. And the more people who work for the network, the faster and faster Bitcoin will be generated, and that will lead to declining values, inflation. Um, so one easy way to combat that was that he put a difficulty level. The more and more people are working, the harder and harder it is to get rewarded. To the harder and harder it is to generate Bitcoin from your work. Uh, and so to go back to the number two news article, Bitcoin is at an all-time hash, all-time all high. The hash rate is at an all-time high. Um, so it means that. Why did I put this in? It means that the mining has recovered. Because it's sobrang bagsak yung difficulty level. A lot of people stop mining when China banned miners. Because as I mentioned, yung China yung pangunahing bansa na kung kung nasa yung mga miners dante. Uh, when China said illegal na yan, takbuhan lang <laughs> takbuhan lahat ng mga miners to Kazakhstan, to Iceland, to Miami. Um, so it took a little while, it took several months for the hash rate to 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 go up again, but now we're at we're at an all-time high again. Um, so it proves that people, because especially those who are anti-crypto, were like, ah, wala na. Panung, uh, when China when China banned Bitcoin, wala na game GG na yan. Wala nang pag in crypto. But here we are. Bitcoin is low, yes, but because probably of certain other ma market factors, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but there as seen in how many people are mining it. Yun nga, all-time high yung mining rate. Uh, there is still very much an interest in Bitcoin. It's not gonna die. It's not going away. Tried to kill a mosquito, but it's still flying around. Um, yeah, so Bitcoin is not going away anytime soon. And the hard evidence of that is the, the hash rate. Yun nga, it's at an all-time high. Um, so the miners have recovered, and people are still very much into... Bitcoin and crypto in general. Although that, that's an interesting. Usually, um, when the usually when the price is down, the hash rate goes down also. Because people are discouraged. Why will I be mining a bagsak yung price of Bitcoin? You, you know, I can't sell it for what it used to be before. That usually be the relationship. The lower the price, hash rates wouldn't be this high. Yung all time high siya ngayon. Um, which I think is further evidence na, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, which I think is, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I unahin ko lang to si Carla. Uh, sup, Carl, I assume you mean shout out, so sh shout out Carl Dion Puyat from YouTube. Uh, <laughs> I hope you didn't mean shut up, um, because I still got a whole show to do, but uh, shout out. Um, so that's hard evidence that people are convinced at least of the economic feasibility of bitcoin bottom line kasi yung bitcoin na yan eh yung mga miners negosyo din yan some people kasi look at cryptocurrency uh, and if you're super against it it's like you're very emotionally invested na parang why scam yan scam pyramid scheme yan and then on the other end there are the evangelicals na or yung sobrang rabid talaga na no this is the libertarian dream and you know parang anonymity and i i want total freedom but in the middle are very business-oriented uh, individuals like miners na negosyo lang yan. Um, and the fact that they're mining in record numbers is proof na in their economic wisdom, may kinabukasan, may futures sa Bitcoin. That's why they're putting their money, they're paying for their electric bills, they're buying new hardware because they think na Bitcoin will be around for a long time. They can still make money from it. So... That is um, one indicator that crypto is not going anywhere. All right, let me just go through the chat. Uh, sana next week uptrend a little Bitcoin, makabawi naman sa naipit. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it will go up. 
just want to go back at the at the at the at the plan to go to your shop to buy and build. Yes, we are close to Don Bosco on Chino Roses. This from Facebook. I'm a streamer. I always watch your content. Ano po tayo ang price range ng isang budget PC build na pwedeng gamitin for stream. Um, it, you know, if you really want to go budget, a 5600G will play most of the stream-worthy games like Valorant. Um, Genshin, Genshin, you know, was kind of sick up for a while last year, but I don't really see it a lot anymore. Um, Apex Legends, same, medyo sumikat, but medyo na matay. Um, no offense to <laughs> people get very emotional when like their favorite games are said to be dying or whatever. I, I'm not saying, um, <laughs> Lord knows, I mean, if you watched my gaming streams like the past week, I've been playing Civilization VI, which is, you know, at least eight years old or something. So I'll be the last one to, to comment on like on a game dying or something. Um, but even a 5600G, 5700G will play those games relatively well and, and, and it can handle the stream. Kung yun talaga yung budget na um, if that's what you're aiming for. Jose, Marie Carl, sup? Jensen still has some audience like below 13. Uh, Kaiser, sup? Jensen still pop, pretty popular, just more of a niche audience fan base. Um, yeah, I don't really, um, I haven't really followed um, those particular games. Um, and you know, I, I'm uh, to be upfront, I'm not that much of a streamer um, gaming wise. And to be honest, I'm not really that much of a streamer. Um, like the talk show, the talk show type or something. It's just na uh, during the pandemic, we decided as part of the regular content of Hardware Sugar, it would be good to have a regular show. So kaya yung magtanong, yung Crypto Watch. Um, we used to have in the industry before, which I actually found very uh, informative for me because we interviewed people from the local hardware tech industry. But it was super hard to find um inter you know good uh guests um so i was super happy with the guests that we did get but we wanted to meet, keep the quality and it was hard to find so we had to retire that show uh media diet we also retired that show but we kept uh so our three main shows are pwede magtanong in the shop which is a live from the shop every month and uh and crypto watch and then we do another show which uh the topic changes uh every year guys are six six eight years old I last played kasi Civ 6 before this month five years ago. And five years ago, it was already kind of old. So medyo uh, estimate ko lang that it's around eight years old. But it's around thereabouts. <laughs> it's around thereabouts. Uh, Anti-monitor, even China is also controlling CSGO skins. That is a, that's a very interesting market for me. Never ako pumasok dun sa... Uh, customizable skins on CSGO, but I, I understand my market. Does my crates and my keys and my knives or, or something? Obviously, I'm not familiar at all um, with the market. But for me, that was when I when I discovered that uh, there's there's a market for that, the skins for CS, which is which is such an old game. Um, it really uh, it uh, really, another indication uh, digital goods really are. Not really mainstream, but in the sense, um, they have value. I mean, even before they've gone mainstream, like Meta, Meta is trying to do now with the Metaverse and things like that, or crypto or NFTs, even before all those things, I mean, there was a dedicated fan base na, you know, or like you know, hats at TF2. Uh, you know, hats at TF2. Those also had value, and then so definitely an example of how digital goods can have real world value. <laughs> Although I do agree with um Joey Palma, head scratcher, yung 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 actually yung the whole CSGO skins thing, but there's no denying na sobrang ano. Uh, those things are expensive, and they get ano, they you'll pay through the you'll pay through the nose for some of them. Ah, new Pokemon. I saw a review, but I didn't realize that it was uh, popular for streamers. Could be, could be. Uh, did I see Ergobert? Ergobert, you there? I thought I saw... Ah, here. <laughs> I I thought I saw you, Ergobert, in the chat. 
Uh, yes. Russia, Ukraine, and Biden's upcoming executive order on crypto. Ergo, actually, um, trades even more actively than me now. Uh, so I've been thinking of having him on the show because he's also good at very uh, at these alternative coins. Because it's tanders yung approach ko sa crypto investment. So I I tend to <laughs> I can't even like you know I like OMG. I like uh, I like um, not I do like XRP, but there's another one, Tezos. I like Tezos, XTZ. But all of those things are are much older compared to some of the other altcoins now, like Solana, like um, ADA. So Ergobert actually keeps me up to date on those things. Plus yung mga blockchain, uh, plus those blockchain games. So I've been thinking of, um, I've been thinking of having him on the show. Baka next month. Na, ano, then we can talk about like uh, altcoins talaga, yung mga bagong altcoins and things like that. Pansinin naman, si Vladimir. Vladimir, uh, please tell your, the guy with your same name to quit it in Ukraine kasi it's making everybody nervous. Uh, <laughs> but consider yourself noticed. Cake, cake, yok. Cake, cake, koik, cake, yok. I do actually know Kyok in real life, uh, but she never appears in the stream. Uh, go by variables, dude. Actually, I am waiting for my Fitbit 5, and I want to make a video about it. Uh, I'm super excited to get it, actually. Because the, the, sorry, like, super minor digression before we go to 3 and 4, points 3 and 4. Um, I have to walk my dog every day. He's a husky. From Ergobert, actually. So, uh... Kasalanan niya ni Ergobert sa akin. I'll never forgive him for giving me that husky. Such a pain in the ass. But you, if you watch some of the videos, you've seen the husky on in the video. Such a pain in the ass. So anyway, I need to walk that dog um, every day. Tapos one time, ginamit ko lang yung phone ko as a very basic fitness tracker. Yung Google Fit. Tapos rec I recorded like, you know, oh, I'm starting to walk. And then I stopped it at the end of the walk. Every day pala, nakaka 2.2 kilometers ako dahil sa hype na yan. Um... So I'm like, whoa, I mean, that's the significant distance. Uh, we're just walking. So, you know, it's not like I'm running or I'm not even I'm not even jogging because that, that dog is super old. He can't jog even. Like he gets tired after like after a sprint. Yun nga, wala nang asim masyado. Um so uh so it's just really a walk. Sometimes it's a brisk walk. So, but you know, when I looked at the distance, wow, 2.2 every day is not bad, right? Even if it's just a walk. So I, I decided to get a Fitbit. Si Rafael, yung utol ko nasa, is on vacation um, abroad. So it's much cheaper abroad. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the, the guys actually who carry Fitbit uh, here in the Philippines, um, they've actually been very good to us. They've sent us some items over. Uh, so I feel bad for mentioning na medyo malapit. Uh, I mean, medyo malayo yung price. Uh, Naka-sale din sa Amazon, in fairness. I mean, nakataon lang I, I was lucky enough to get it on sale. Um, so, so, yeah, so I got myself a Fitbit 5, but Rafael hasn't come home yet, but I'm super looking forward to that. Um, because I mentioned uh, obsessed now, konte, so I can track my sleep, but the Fitbit 5 actually, um, can track your sleep, like how much REM you're getting. Um, and there's so there are a bunch of other things. It's, it's basically sulit, like if you own a 4, parang sulit yung upgrade sa 5. And this is my first fitness tracker, so sulit talaga yung. Um, data that I'll be getting from it because apparently a lot of um, uh, a lot of the a lot of the distractions of tech tech cartographers on YouTube. I'll, I'll get to your comment, tech cartographer. Um, um, but um, uh, yeah, so this is my first wearable, and it seemed like a good time to jump in because the Fitbit Five has a substantially more sensors jammed into it, and I'm not even like I'm not even looking for like I'm not super i don't work out uh religiously or anything like that but i do want to make a video like exploring um like if you're new to wearables or if you uh, particularly to fitness trackers like kamusta ba sila? would it be something you'd be interested in like i don't want to sound vain but i didn't realize my nose looks so big uh, or baka it's just like the way it appears in my screen but anyway <laughs> thank you joey palma and thank you always for um uh, popping by the streams, I, I noticed your name a lot. Um, <laughs> si tech cartographer, uh, I see the professor's not wearing his glasses because previously tech cartographer had mentioned that I look like the professor. Sometimes I wear my glasses on stream, 
uh, from uh, Money Heist. And I think I replied that all I need to do now is um, rob a bank. <laughs> or or get, get, get a posse together, like get an Ocean's 12, Ocean's 11 kind of posse going and rob a bank. Um, although I do wear... I do wear uh, contact lenses, so I, I, I that's what I have on now. Uh, but the glasses are like for after hours. <laughs> Vladimir, uh, Radio Kaka token, been waiting for Crypto Watch app to ask this. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I am not familiar. Ergobert, if you're still watching and you know uh, anything about Radio Kaka, please do jump in. Um, but no, I, I don't know anything about it. Yunga. Uh, I have to be honest, I'm ako sa bagong altcoins because there are just so many coming out now. And I'm uh, I, 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 I've always been a bit hesitant about altcoins because it's really hard to uh, differentiate what's okay and what's not. Um, sige, ITX addict, and then I'll go through the next talking points because it's hard to um, <laughs> it's hard to do chat and then the talking points. So let's just get the talking points out of the way. Careful buying abroad, no warranty. <laughs> ITX addict and I have been chatting actually, uh, PMing each other about the whole new egg fracas. Um, if you haven't been watching uh, YouTube Gamers Nexus has an entire YouTube series. Na basically, you new egg sold them a defective part and they knew it was defective, and then they didn't want to replace it. And it was only when he identified himself and made a video na, uh, for the bad practices of New Egg where na pit pinansin siya. So super shady practices by New Egg. And, and so that's what ITX Addict is uh, referring to here. Na uh, very difficult. Uh, and of course, it wouldn't be a hardware sugar stream if I didn't mention <laughs> kundi ko plinag yung shop na even locally, it's very hard, as some of our customers have mentioned, like David Gro, uh, who's in chat also has mentioned, uh, um, it's very hard to get warranty here. Uh, mm, um, but not with Hardware Sugar, who has no BS warranty. Okay, sorry. I'm really going to get through the chat, and then I'm going to get to the talking points. Huh? So, Ergo Burchett, he hasn't heard of it. Uh, and May Musk was the ambassador. I shoot the sister, the sister of Elon. Um, uh, so that does sound interesting. I'll, I'll check it out. Radio, radio cacao, deba. Radio caco, radio cacao. Um, I'll check it out. Although again, you know, I, I'm worried about coins or tokens like getting influencers or getting sikat people to pitch for them. Um, I prefer something like. And then utility, like Ethereum. When Ethereum first came out, it was like smart contracts. Bitcoin was very dumb in that sense. Uh, Ethereum was like parang built in built in escrow. Uh, the promise of smart contracts was like, or let's say I made make a bet on a basketball game, Atenea versus Lasal. Uh, I bet Lasal will win. When Lasal wins, the smart contract can automatically check who won and then release the money. So I thought that was a one feature of Ethereum, which actually hasn't, you know, been used a lot. But even early on, nandun na yung feature na Ethereum na parang naisip ko na that makes sense. That that's a good addition to a cryptocurrency. So I tried to invest in crypto na may ganon, um, uh, na may na may na may purpose, na may utility. Um, one other. One other feature that a lot of crypto projects are trying to address, which I think is super useful, is uh, scalability. The Visa card network, the MasterCard network, uh, deal with millions, hundreds of billions of transactions a minute. I mean, it's it's astounding if you think about how how the technical mind and the technical background, the technical aspect, what's going on in the background when you swipe your card. And no cryptocurrency has reached that level of scale yet. Um, if we want to use it as something na kaya, that has commercial appeal, that has commercial value, that has long-term potential, it has to address the scalability issue. That's why Ethereum 2.0, uh, Ethereum has been trying to address that with Ethereum 2.0. Um, a bunch of other projects, I believe like Solana also has been trying to address that as well. Um, Bam from YouTube, Pega Pegasi. Uh, no, I'm not familiar. Sorry. I want to make a really off-color joke about 
something that sounds like pega pe- pegasi uh because i was talking <laughs> because i'm talking about it with a friend today uh, not sobrang random pero anyway um di pa tayo after hours guys so i'll i'll refrain from the off color joke last na talaga from chat kaiser yes cuz i was watching the same video um gamers nexus or how i refer to steve as gamer jesus because of his super long hair they dropped the uncut interview and only gamers nexus can can do a youtube video that's like an hour plus long because in fairness to steve he was saying that i met with new egg and this is the entire meeting um this is the entire meeting i didn't want to cut anything so you guys be the judge i do agree with kaiser though that it's pretty much them doing damage control and there's a lot of corporate speak like i got it's I get very turned off personally when I hear executives talking in like, oh, every customer matters, no customer left behind, and we're always about like, it's like, and you know, that's all BS, right? If you're like, if you're a customer and like, again, PLDT would be the perfect example. You always hear PLDT um, executives talking about like customer being number one, they spend so much, etc. And all of that is BS when you can't even pick up the phone and get a CS person from from PLDT. All of that is BS when you read about the labor cases of PLDT um, not paying their contractors properly or making their contractors as contractuals. And yun nga, um, all of that BS, like the PLDT cares about its customers when at the end of the day, the customer doesn't feel that. Um, and it, it, I, I felt that same, that's how I felt listening to the New Egg executives. To be, I have not finished it yet, to be fair, in fairness, to be fair to New Egg. And the executives uh, in that meeting, but that's how I felt. Na super easy to talk about, like Costa Rica being number one and BS like that. But how can you say that if you know, the, Steve had like a binder and he's like, in the twelve hours or thirty six hours after I put up a dedicated email address um, to for people to email the complaints, it's like this much, right? Um, so I'm very wary of these big companies that that it's always about like. Um, uh, it's always about like customer first and you know it's always customer centric and uh we wanted to go back to our roots and that's our customer who made this company parang ganyan. um so it's yeah but you know bottom line in fairness to converge actually i'm gonna do i might I'll probably do a video next month on like i, I had a <laughs> semi frustrating moment with converge na ano para man to, and it's really ridiculous but in fairness to Converge, it's very easy always to get them on the phone. And when you email them, it's very easy to get a reply. Although yun nga, my, the video will be about like, parang di nila binabasa yung sinasabi ko. It's also very easy kasi to have a stock reply. Tapos yun lang tinatapon mo sa customer. Di mo binabasa yung sinasabi ni customer. Um, but in fairness to Converge, it's light years ahead of PLDT in that aspect. Um, Globe is somewhere in the middle. Usually, it's somewhat somewhat kaya usually kaya naman to get a globe cs person but it's my experience has been converge is the easiest one but pldt is the worst the the absolute abysmal uh for for ano uh for trying to get customer service mabilis sila if you want to apply for a new line in fairness to pldt and again you know i, I don't want to bash like left and right in fairness to pldt mabilis sila for a new line Mabilis sila to install the line. And maganda yung line. Pero when shit hits the fan, when something goes wrong with the line, good luck na lang sa'yo. Mamatay ka na lang sa paghintay, wala pa rin dadating, wala pa rin sasagot sa, sa, sa customer ano, complaint mo sa PLDT. Thanks, Robert. Pegaxi, play to earn game, being hyped up as new Axie. Ah, well, there you go. Um, thanks for that. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll get, I'll get through everybody's chat, guys, but I really do need to uh, go through the news here, uh, the, the talking points that I mentioned that I put in the description. So, number three is unlock 100% hash rate on LHR cards. Is it a scam? So, uh, backstory is that there are, backstory is that NVIDIA came out with cards called LHR cards or low hash rate cards. Basically, they have been nerfed or you can't use them for mining. You can use them for mining, but in the sense that they're super inefficient. Like you wouldn't want to use them for mining because it's sobrang lugi, malilugi ka. Um, 
So Nvidia put out those cards uh, as a way of saying, as a, as a way of looking gamers in the eye and telling them that we got your back, even though Nvidia knows that they made a killing of uh, minor cards. Um, and they've kept the super high end as always non LHR. So in a way, it's a very savvy move on the part of Nvidia. They they look at they look at um they look at the gamers who have felt na kaya tumataas din yung prices kasi so yung mga miners and they're like we got your back we're a gaming company at heart. But they kept the 3090 uh, as exclusively non LHR forever. So they're like telling miners you want to mine, pony up for the 3090. At the same time, they're trying to get back their core audience of gamers. So pretty good business move on the part of NVIDIA. Although as with any restrictions, uh, smart people have found ways around them. But it's only around 80-85% versus how the non LHR cards were like before. To provide background, everything now is basically LHR. It's very hard now to find 3080, 70, 60s na LHR, non LHR parin. Um, all of the V2s, all of the updated versions, all of the refresh cards are basically LHR now. Yun nga, except for the 3090, which Nvidia has said will be always non LHR. So, of course, you know, you don't, you can't pony up for the 125,000 that is that you will need for a 3090, but you still want to mine and you want it to be as efficient as possible. I'm along 80%, I'm along 85%. You want the 100% na kaya ng card. Um, so there are software programs running around now. And again, thanks to ITX Addict for the tip. He's the one who phoned it in. Uh, may, next, may mga programs na who are promising that install me and you will get 100% hash rate. Yung talagang todo kaya ng card, na, card mo. Um, the problem is a lot of miners have their, have their virus, um, uh, virus scan disabled. So as not to interfere with the mining. And unfortunately, those programs are a scam. They they do not um they, they have malware attached to them. And I, I don't think they do anything to improve the hash rate of the card. So again, it's a it's a it's it's that old saying that it's just simply too good for it's uh, too good to be true. Um so you will have to get your your hundred percent hash rate the old fashioned way by tweaking it, by doing workarounds and things like that. Uh, Kaiser actually has a good point uh, in the chat. So people now are trading in their 3070s, 6700s, 6800s for a 5700 XT because of the hash rate. I Because of, of a better hash rate or efficiency-wise. Uh, I do know actually of somebody who has a ton of 5700 XTs. Uh, yes, he is a miner. Uh, yeah, and that is, he, he has yeah a lot of those cards online mining. Uh, although he has been known to buy the occasional 3090. All right, so just to round out the news for this particular episode, um, Russia, Ukraine, and oil. So Russia has been jonesing to invade Ukraine for quite a while now. Uh, Joven, Hoven from Facebook, good evening, Lord, new subscriber. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, it really means a lot to us because we're running after 100K now. We want to hit 100K subs. Pangarap ko sana by June, but you know maybe that's not realistic. But we're really gonna try. Uh, kung stretch goal natin yan. Uh, let's try to see if we can reach it by June. Um, but we gotta get some. We gotta get some really hard hitting episodes in. Na uh, talagang makakapul in ng, ng subs. Um, but if not, hopefully by the end of the year we'll hit 100k. But yeah, um, just my long way of saying that I appreciate uh, subscribers. Kind of like how new egg. <laughs> Sorry, still thinking about the new egg. Kind of like new egg. It's like, oh yeah, we appreciate customers. We appreciate customers. You're right. Um, but uh, Russia, for a number of complicated and historical reasons, and personal reasons to Putin, <coughs> to our to Vladimir, one has been jonesing, and they're they're you know they they've already put a put a foothold in when they. A couple of years ago, when they when they sent in paramilitary troops, they weren't official Russian military, but they sent in paramilitary troops to support the Ukrainian rebels, which themselves were sponsored or you know were gained, were were receiving support from Russia. So that was a few years ago. 
So now they actually have troops amassing on the border, although Russia claims it's just exercises, but everybody believes that uh, a full-scale invasion of Ukraine is imminent. Um, lots of I've seen a lot of conspiracy theories online. Um, now, you know, Russia... I don't want to go, go whole Joe Rogan <laughs> on uh, uh, on this particular topic na parang... Like, oh, you know, guys, this is what the news is telling you. Pero ito talaga sa likod ng balita. Ito yung katotohanan. Um, I, don't, I don't want to be that kind of guy. Um, so there are, there, there are, you know, there are a whole bunch of reasons. Some, some analysis online I agree with. Um, but I, I do encourage everybody to, if you're interested in what's going on, to read the mainstream media. Kasi yun nga, parang yung mga tao sa internet, basta hindi, parang bad word na yun, mainstream media. But there's nothing... Um, the the mainstream media, by and large, is factually accurate. Okay, and uh, ako, I, I'm biased to sort of the liberal leaning mainstream media. So the so the New York Times, Guardian, uh, Rappler here. Okay, I'll, I'll say it. You know, I I read Rappler. Um, but beyond that, I do encourage you to to check out more uh, in depth. Still mainstream, but they're not like newspapers lang. So like yung foreign policy, um, yung, yung mga trade tra- trade magazines. Uh, I, I call them trade magazines because their their topics are really more like foreign policy um, and uh, trade trade in the international sense. Na, you know, it's like countries you know trading items back and forth. Uh, the Economist, of, of course, very well known for in depth analysis. Again, not to say that everybody gets it right, but it's important for you, if you're really interested in the topic to read everything you can about it. So you, you have an informed and educated opinion. Yung nga, wag lang, wag lang tayo maniwala sa mga kahit sinong si Raulo na may internet connection at mahil, mahilig mag, magdada dito sa internet, i.e. me, right? I.e. I, I, whoever, streamer, whatever, vlogger, whatever you see on the internet. That's so why uh, uh, for me, it's really like re- read up on your own. Um, but w- what I will say about the topic is that, um, yeah, for, for historical reasons, uh, <laughs> Putin is jonesying. Uh, historical and current political reasons. I mean, uh, it's very good for the Russian uh, people's ego. I mean, for I, I remember, you know, in the late 90s uh, when Russia was really disintegrating and everybody is fleeing, there was no money from oil. Um, the time had it listed as the worst place to be a white guy because you know white white guys usually have it the best because right? um they have the best living standards and things like that but russia was the uh the worst place to be a uh, to, to be a white guy like life expectancy everybody a lot of people were, were drowning their sorrows in in drink and stuff like that um but um they have it, it. It's all about national pride, also. Eh? Uh, a part of it is national pride. A part of it is Putin's pride. I don't know. Putin has a lot invested emotionally in the Ukraine. Uh, I, I I think it's fair to say a part of him does see himself as restoring the former Soviet Union because Vladimir was a former KGB agent. Um, he he was a minor bureaucrat in the former Soviet Union aparachik. I don't know how they say that, what the pronunciation is. Um, and it must be it must feel good for him to reestablish some bits of the empire to to thumb to you know to, to thumb his nose at the West. Um, so this is my way of saying that don't really automatically believe that like oh it's a Western conspiracy to bring Russia down and things like that. Um, uh, Russia and China have very recently just just uh formed not a formal alliance but it was the strongest worded document because vlad uh yeah, parang best friends kami, like vlad uh putin visited russia for the winter games he was the most high profile government foreign government official to do so um so and uh, before that leading up to that they came out with a joint statement saying that which was very strongly worded um that you know their their interests are aligned Russia and China. So um, Putin has a lot, you know, the the sword rattling, the sword waving. He he has a lot to gain both domestically and internationally. Thumbing his nose at the West, affirming uh, 
that common stance with with China. So yun nga, I, I caution everybody na oh you know ito yung real re- reason behind. And actually nakita ko to sa mga groups na kasama ko na medyo may mga kasama matanda tas ko ano nilang pino forward na ito yung real reason why ano and it's a, it's really uh, 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 the US propaganda na actually sa sa Russia talaga yan and ay, <laughs> ay. <laughs> so yun yun um please do re- read up on your own just don't accept whatever you read on the internet um but i i will say that russia stands to gain a lot vladimir putin stands to gain a lot from uh the saber rattling and um and if he does push through as it does seem likely that he will invade ukraine dave from youtube in your opinion will india side with russia or not they do have a good relationship but Relationship is being tested by Russia relying on China. Yes, very much so. So, and India and China have a bad relationship. Yes, the Chinese and the Indians really kind of hate each other. And again, this goes back to history. They fought several wars. Um, that is not a warm relationship at all. And they're always kind of shooting at each other. There's like a Cold War, hot war going on in the Kashmir uh, border because because... China claims it uh, as part of its uh, Tibet claim. You know, the, those mountains there, uh, China claims them. Um, the Indians also claim them. So every now and then, they, you know, they, they get, you know, some some guy gets bored and shoots across the border and things like that. So I, I agree with Dave that um, basically Dave's question is there, there are three parties. The, the Russians, it's hard to, I know. Um, yeah, sorry. So there's there's yeah, sorry, I wasn't prepared, so I don't have any I know. But there are three. There's a triangle, the Russians, the Indians, and the Chinese. Um, the Russians are friends with China, and the Indians are friends with China, but the Russia is now in friends with China. And Dave is asking, so Panana see si Russia, India. Um to be honest, I I don't know enough to comment. I don't know how much India relies on Russia let's say for oil, let's say for gas, because that's one interesting thing about this whole Russian dynamic um, is that the European states where actually the conflict may possibly spill over, again, historically, um, the European states are not so keen to call out um, Russia on the Ukraine because they need the gas. They need, Russia is the number one uh, exporter of natural gas and Germany in particular just built a new pipeline um, to fix it. Um, sorry, to fix it to to export gas to Germany. So Germany, who is the leader on the continent, um, the French will contest that. But Germany, basically in terms of manpower, basically in terms of economic and military might, uh, is the leader when it comes to those things. It is not keen to challenge Russia on Ukraine because they do want. Russian gas. And so that's when they, I'll accept that. Like, I'll agree with that as true. The conspiracy theorists jump on that and say that, you know, that's why um, the mainstream media in the US is hyping up this this war, this this potential conflict, because it's just a way of pressuring Germany not to buy gas from, from Russia. I think that's misfounded. I think that Putin really does want to invade Russia. Sorry. <laughs> Reinvade Ukraine for a bunch of reasons. Again, it benefits him domestically. It benefits him politically. It is it he's invested in it both from a historical and present goals perspective. So I don't think that the media is overhyping the the possible conflict. Um, but I. I do agree that Germany has its own strategic interest at heart. And I can't blame the Germans for refusing to call out the Russians because the Germans very badly need that gas. Um, no local government in Germany will survive if they can't get gas, uh, cheap gas, to, to light their homes, to power their power plants, um, especially because Germany has transitioned away from nuclear power plants ever since the 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 tsunami in Japan a couple of years ago where the F- Fukushima, the Fukushima plant went, uh, had a meltdown. So I do agree that Germany probably will not call out Russia on this. Um, 
but you know, I don't agree with the conspiracy theories that this is a made up a, ma- a made up crisis para lang may magamit yung US to pressure the Germans to stop buying gas from uh stop buying gas from Russia. Yes. I just do want to end with my short political whatever or how I think it will affect prices. Prices of oil have gone up because Russia is the second largest oil producer after uh, Saudi. So prices of oil have gone up with the speculation that there will be war. And the markets don't like uncertainty. War uh, is always an uncertain thing. Markets don't like that. And Bitcoin has reacted accordingly. It has slumped down back to yun, back to below 40, back to 37. As uh, Kaiser knows, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm very bad at predicting prices. So because <laughs> like I'm looking at 37 now for Bitcoin, I'm like, oh, that's a good price. But you know, if war does indeed come, that will probably sink lower. So even I would probably hold on and not buy yet. <laughs> um 37 is a good price though. <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah. I mean, joking aside, I would probably wait because uh Russian involvement does seem imminent. Um it, it's very interesting just as an armchair perspective. Can Putin get what he wants just by saber rattling? Will he bring it to the brink? Will he bring it to the brink and then will he de-escalate? Because then he can look like the good guy. Um but he has to do it in a certain way that halata na hindi siya cave in to US pressure. Because the British and the States are, uh, the rhetoric is very high that that's unacceptable. I believe the latest statement from Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, was like a barrage of um, sanctions await Russia, parang ganyan. But if Putin can de-escalate, bring his troops off the border, but in a way na parang siya yung panalo, na siya yung, I, di- I don't give a rat's ass about your sanctions, I'm still gonna sell oil to Germany. In a way na parang pinakita niya sa mundo na I got what I wanted, linigay ko lang yung troops doon, they didn't even have to move in, natakot kayo lahat, and Russia is a power again to be reckoned with, um, a power that is equal to the West, that is back to the Cold War standard of two equal powers rather than angat yung US, dehado yung Russia. Um, if he can do that without actually having to send in troops, then that's that would be the best, diba? I mean, even from a from a Sun Chu kind of strategic perspective. Although I, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I think. Again, it's very hard to say I'm not Russian. I don't know the pulse of the Russian people. But they seem to be, uh, just based on history, they don't seem to put out if they go to war and a couple of their boys get shot up. I mean, it's it's the cost of war. The Russians are very stoic. They're used to that kind of cost. Um, so in that sense, maybe there is no incentive for Putin to de-escalate. Everything is pushing, all of the motivations are pushing him to, yeah, let's go. I mean, uh, let's invade. We'll, we'll, grab, we'll, get, we'll get prestige back, you know, uh, look good domestically. Uh, my, my troops can show what they're made of. So from a strategic level, maybe there is no incentive talaga that will get Putin to de-escalate. Um, um, I can't imagine the U.S. going to war over the Ukraine. Um, neither will the British. Again, the Germans want the gas, so they won't make a fuss. The Ukraine is just too much outside the spheres of influence of everybody to 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 go to war for that. Um, so in a way, Putin will get what he wants, even by going to war there's very little cost to him if he de uh, if he de-escalates on his own um but i i hope to be proven wrong um war is not good for the markets <laughs> uh i mean just from a purely selfish perspective let alone uh, costing people suffering and death um it would be good if putin could de-escalate without uh, without looking like he de-escalated because he pressure nung Western powers. 
Um, I did see a question, Jose Maricar, if we'll be safe here uh, in the Philippines. Pretty much so, unless it becomes a nuclear war, I think. Um, I mean, if suddenly somebody starts lobbing nukes, I mean, it's game over for everybody, basically. But um, if it's a localized war, um, we probably will be mostly safe, yes. Uh, again, I'm just an ARP chair general, but um, if you read history, if you read current events, which I, I do read a lot of um, in my spare time, um, very unlikely that we will be directly affected by any conflict in the Ukraine. Um, yeah. So, well, just um, to... From Zen N, just to give a different uh, perspective, uh, which is prevalent also in the internet. Now, there's a big chance it will escalate to World War Three. Basically, um, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't really. Um, I think that's premature to say that it it will escalate. Uh, although Zen is not saying that, Zen is saying that there is a big chance. I, I wouldn't say so yet. Um, you know, Ukraine is not a NATO member. If it's attacked, it's not an automatic. The whole point of NATO was in response to Russia with Cold War. Na an attack on one is an attack on all. The, that provision has only been used once when the U.S. was attacked for 9-11. It has never been used in a state-to-state -state armed conflict. Uh, that provision has never been brought up by the state-to-state -state armed conflict. Um, so Ukraine is not a NATO member. Um, it's Ukraine is too far out of the spheres of influence of everybody to really get upset with it. I can't imagine also Putin steamrolling beyond the, the Ukraine. Why would he? Um, so, I mean, you know... I'm, Anything could happen, but I, I don't think World War III is imminent yet at this point. Um, a lot has to happen, I think, before we actually get the sense that, yes, perhaps that is, that is a realistic danger that we need to assess. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to wrap up my stream. Thanks so much for joining me, even though it's dinner time. Uh, I'll just leave with the word that ako, I wouldn't buy yet right now because feeling ko military conflict is imminent. Prices will plunge some more because of that, and then that's the time that you buy. Um, um, yeah, so just to give a recap on where we are video-wise, tomorrow we're going to publish the video on uh, the Deepcool PQ1000M. It's a 1,000-watt PSU from Deepcool. The, the review drops tomorrow. If you're a YouTube member, you can already actually watch it now. It's uh, exclusively available, available to YouTube members. Thursday, we'll be dropping a short on... How to increase your BPI transfer limit. Hate the BPI transfer limit. It's so annoying, the 50K transfer limit. Uh, there's actually a, a, an easy way to increase it, which I never knew, uh, which I did finally. So the short will be about that. That's Thursday. On Friday, we release another video um, on <laughs> how to improve the speed of any computer setup. So I'm... Uh, Excited for that. I had fun making it. It's not what you think. You know, lang. spoiler alert, it's not what you think. And then on Monday uh, is my video on... Actually, if you watched our live stream last Sunday, you already know what the video is about. You've already watched half that video because I, le I live streamed uh, me shooting the video. It's The topic is nice to have, pero kung wala sa budget, okay lang na tanggalin sa build. So these kind of nice to have things that if you're on a very tight budget, you can actually get rid of. So that drops Monday. And that, uh, uh, Kaiser, no, no, it's not unloaded Windows. It's like, it's major clickbaity, actually, yung uh, increased performance for any PC setup. But 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 I promise, actually, uh, it is true. Um, it will, the thing we talk about in the video will improve performance, will improve the speed of any computer setup. But it's not what you think. Uh, yun. So thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a good night. Please do watch the upcoming videos.